Hey folks, The Inflicted here. It's too rainy to play paintball today, so I wanted to make a video about how I film for paintball. So there's a lot of videos about how to mount a GoPro type camera to a paintball mask, but I've picked up a couple things I haven't seen anyone else do and wanted to share those. So first of all, mounting a camera to a GoPro requires the use of these waterproof housings to protect the lens of the camera. I don't actually use GoPros, I use various knockoffs. I've got the EK7000. What I really like is the Suku C30. This is a great camera for paintball specifically because it has a gyro stabilized lens which makes it a bit more smooth when you're running around and it has these really nice audible prompts when you push the button to start recording and stop recording and a low battery indicator. And since the camera is going to be mounted on your mask where you can't reach it or see the screen or anything, it's really useful to be able to know whether it's on or off and recording or not. So mounting these things to your mask can be a bit of a challenge because there's no readily made adapter that you can get from the store, but a lot of people have used these bicycle mounts and screws on either side on the top of a paintball mask, which does work. But I've always I found a better method, I feel like. So if you get one of those kits that has tons of GoPro accessories, and I suggest you do, um, you'll get lots of these little buckle units, and they come usually on any kind of housing you'll buy. So if you're going to use a GoPro-style camera for paintball, one thing you need to keep in mind is that these waterproof housings are not 100% paintball-proof. You can see this one took a shot to the lens, and it cracked when it got hit. So an important thing to do once you start to get your first GoPro camera is to go ahead and order some spare housings, the waterproof housings, off of uh, Amazon or eBay or someplace like that. You can often get these things for 4 to $5, sometimes cheaper if you buy a couple of them and have them shipped over. And it's a good idea to get a couple of the things, especially if you're going to start cutting them up and modifying them for specific use. Do make sure that you get one that's going to fit your camera, though. So all the cameras I use have kind of the first... Uh, generation GoPro style to them. You've got one button up here on the upper right hand corner and then two buttons on the side in addition to the shutter button. Uh, just for, for, con for contrast here, this is a GoPro uh, 3 or 4 style housing. It's got only one button on the side. The forward button is down low so that's not going to match up. And besides that, it's just too small for it to fit. These are two commonly available styles for the cheaper GoPro style cameras. You can see there's two basic different designs. They have different buckles on the top. This is really a first generation with this sliding locking buckle. This one snaps on and off a bit easier and is a little bit more compact overall. So I prefer this style. You can get them both. They both work, but I found I've gotten better use out of these. So in order to mount these things to your mask, uh, what we're going to do is cut off these three prongs off of the buckle and also drill two holes on either side of this uh, buckle part so that we can run a, a zip tie through it. So the first thing you want to do is to go ahead and take the cheapest possible power drill and then drill two holes on either side of this buckle from the back from the inside to the out so that we can get the zip tie through. So real quick. All right so we've got two holes on either side of this thing Probably at this, this point way bigger than they need to be, but that's fine. And that will be able to run the zip tie through one side and out the other of it. Next thing we're going to need to do is to remove these three prongs here from the buckle so that it does not get in the way of mounting it on top of a mask. So using a Dremel or some other kind of hacksaw or cutting implement, go ahead and remove the three prongs here. So that it won't get in the way. All right, there we go. This is about ready. You may want to take some sandpaper. Just remove some of the bigger bits of chunked up plastic. It doesn't get in the way of your hair or anything like that. All right. So this is it. Really simple. This is the more or less the finished product. You've got two holes for a zip tie on either side of this. 
we've got nothing in the back of here. We can mount this to our old Spectra. So with the nice smooth portion facing back to where your head's going to be so it doesn't get in the way. Just center that up. And we're going to run a zip tie through one of the holes and then down through any one of these ventilation holes on the top of the mask. Then back up a matching hole on the other side. Cinch up your zip tie. Trim off any extra plastic you might have. And Bob's your uncle. You've got a nice centered GoPro mount that's going to be fairly stable, nice and lightweight, out of your way, and comfortable to use. Whenever you want to mount the GoPro to it, you would just put it on there and run the multi mount mounting bolt in. And there you go. It's nice and centered. It's fairly low profile and should work just fine. Right, so now you have a way to mount the camera. The next thing to do is to do a couple modifications to these housings so that they work for paintball a bit better. The very first thing I would suggest you do is to remove this waterproof gasket from the door of the GoPro housing. Both styles come with that gasket, and if you're not going to take it underwater, you really don't need it. Every time you put the camera in there and try and close it up, that gasket has to get crushed up against the back of the housing here, and that puts a lot of stress on the parts of the housing that support the buckle and latch system. You can see in this one the uh, plastic has broken away that holds the uh, buckle on because of all the stress that the gasket puts on there. So since you don't need it and it reduces the life of how long this is going to last, go ahead and remove it. All you got to do to do that is just peel up, pick or whatever, paper clip, I don't know, the, uh, the gasket, remove it, and you can put it back on later if you wanted to, but now this will close fine with the camera in it and puts a lot less stress on the door and the latch and it will last longer. Next thing is that one thing about these waterproof housings is they don't let sound in very well. So if you watch a first person paintball video where the camera is inside a waterproof housing, the sound's often really muffled because it's hard for it to get in there where the microphone is through the door. So what I like to do is to drill holes through the housing, since it's not going under water, so that the sound can get in. You see this one had the holes put in already. So to do that, go ahead and put your camera in the housing, and you're going to want to mark where any hole is that you want there to be. So that's where our microphone opening is on the camera. So go ahead and mount that, mark that there. And on the other side, these cameras actually have a speaker again for those voice prompts. I want to be able to hear that really well. In this case, it's right over here. So mark where that is as well. All right. So go ahead and remove your camera. And again, taking the drill. It doesn't matter exactly how well these match up, but you want to drill where you marked to open that up so sound can get in to the microphone. So I'll put one there. And one over there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add some extra ventilation holes to this housing. Again, this thing's never going to need to go underwater. And I know that these cameras do heat up quite a bit if you're using them. And it's all sealed up. So we'll put some extra ventilation holes on the bottom. Just to try and encourage a little bit of airflow through these things as we use it. And some up here as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up these microphone holes just a little more so we make sure the sound's getting in there and the sound from the speaker gets out. There we go. Now you may need to take a bit of sandpaper or whatever, clean off any plastic that gets shoved in there so that our camera is not gonna get hung up on any of the plastic. So, 
that and get, there we go, this one's fine. But if you end up with a bit of flash or whatever on either side of those, go ahead and clean it up. And now you can see that our microphone is nicely exposed, which is gonna give you better audio quality when you film with these things. Now lastly, these big shiny GoPro cameras can be a real tempting target because they sit right in the top of your mask. And if you play in the woods or whatever or not, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and paint this so it doesn't present quite as much of a big shiny target to other players. So, first thing we need to do is, well, first thing not to do is to remove this protective plastic film that comes on these lenses because that's a really good way to mask this from what we're about to do to this camera. Um, we don't want to paint the door either because that's facing backwards. Other players can't see that. Don't worry about this. So remove this while you work on it. All you have to do is just pull this away from the housing while they work on it. So, it feels kind of weird to sand up such a nice, clean, pretty bit of polycarbonate, but go ahead and do that. And you just want to rough up all the plastic here so that our primer will stick to it. Okay, once you've done that, last thing that we want to do before you paint is to go ahead and mask off a little bit Close up all these holes because you don't want any paint to get onto the inside of the lens because that will really impede this thing from being a good camera. So mask off the inside a little bit. If you want, you can put additional mask on the lens just to ensure nothing gets on that plastic. And there we go, it's ready for paint. All right, so I'm prepping another one. This time, instead of masking off the lens with tape, I'm actually gonna remove it, which you can get to by these little tiny screws back here. So you remove all the little teensy tiny screws and then you can remove the entire lens. There's no way that paint's gonna get on it while you paint it. Okay, once you got your parts roughed up and uh, Clean out and everything. You want to get a real nice light coat of primer. It's nice, even strokes and cover all the surfaces. Okay, once your primer dries, you can go ahead and put a little color on it. And this one's going to be a flat tan. So again, nice, even strokes. Coat all the different surfaces of the cover. So after the paint has had time to cure, you can go ahead and remove all your masking. And if I did it right, yeah. And if you remove the lens to protect it from getting paint on it, you just replace its o-ring make sure you line up the two little tabs on the plastic and that goes back into place and then you put its screws back in to reattach the lens okay when all the tapes off and the lenses are back in place you can just reattach the housing doors they snapped right off and they'll just snap right back on again. Then, these things are about ready to use. Go ahead and put our latch doors back on. Just want to be careful to line those up. Pull the holes and they'll get back into place. There we go. Peel off our protection cover. This thing is ready for the field. There's the finished product. We have two more GoPro housings that are totally prepared for paintball. Got all the necessary modifications. They fit on there nice and easy. And come off again by loosening the uh, attachment screw. So that's it. Uh, guys, let me know if this modification is helpful to you or if you have any suggestions about how to put GoPro cameras on paintball guns and uh, see y'all on the field.